Okay, so the simple air mass, um, air mass thunderstorm generally doesn't give us any severe weather. I mean, it happens in the afternoon. It's kind of short-lived. It's usually just kind of one cell or kind of maybe two cells. I don't know. But um, we have what we call a severe thunderstorm if not only do you have lightning, because by definition, if you have thunder, the sound part of lightning, you had lightning. So lightning and thunder are part of thunderstorms. But it's not severe unless one of these criteria are met. And so notice that the criteria for um, classifying your thunderstorm as a severe thunderstorm has to do with wind, hail, or NATOs. NATOs. Um, that's what some folks call tornadoes, right? So only if you have a certain um, uh, strength of wind, has to be at least 58 miles per hour, and or you have hail specifically and this used to be I'm thinking in the last couple of years it used to be 0.75 inches and now it's one inch okay so that's pretty big <laughs> anything smaller than one inch it doesn't count as severe um, severe thunderstorm or the fact that within that thunderstorm within a cell within that thunderstorm somewhere that that whole system has been known to spawn tornadoes, right? So there you go. Um, so I thought that was interesting. Notice one of the things that um, um, one of the things that doesn't trigger a warning for severe thunderstorms is lightning. So the thing is, is it's the lightning that kills a lot of people every year. So I guess they're just hoping that we know that if you can at least even hear the thunder, the rule of thumb is to, um, if you can hear the noise from the lightning, um, just assume that you're going to get hit. <laughs> uh, take shelter, right? So, all right. So moving on, um, we're going to kind of transition from those kind of mild um, air mass thunderstorms to severe thunderstorms. Air mass thunderstorms don't usually produce severe weather. Um, oftentimes, severe weather can come when you have multiple cells at work, and we're going to talk about two types of systems that have multiple thunderstorms um, working in them. Those would be the squall lines and the mesoscale convective complexes. So oftentimes, your thunderstorm cells can produce the wind or the hail or the tornadoes. Um, they kind of like egg each other on, the cells do. Um, one of the things that people who, who monitor severe weather look for is this feature called an overshooting top. And actually, here's a picture of an overshooting top. It's not a very big picture. But what happens with an overshooting top is that, I don't know if you can see this, but here is the vertical development. Okay, Now, it might be precipitating down there somewhere, but that's clearly part of um, your uh, rising air. And can you see where it's kind of flattened out right here? Let's see, where is it? It's kind of flattened out right here, somewhere, one of these sides. And maybe it's this, this bigger side. This might be the anvil. And the overshooting top is right here. Because basically, we said that the anvil is formed when the cumulonimbus cloud bumps up against the, the tropopause. Okay? But if the cloud has enough energy or punch, the cumulonimbus cloud will go up into the stratosphere. And that's what we call an overshooting top. And that means you have a fair bit of vertical um, instability. Um, let's see. Another thing that can take a cell, an ordinary cell, and make it severe is if you have a fair bit of wind shear. Now, wind shear, by definition, is as you go up in elevation, if you look at what the wind's doing, it will either change its speed or it will change its direction. Okay, those are both types of wind shear. And so I'm going to kind of make kind of a little thing over here. This is normal conditions. Because honestly, we talked earlier that um, within the troposphere, if this is the Earth's surface, um, we said that the winds go, they get faster as you go up in the troposphere, don't, don't they? Okay, so this is my wind getting faster, but um, so we have a fair, we have a little bit of wind shear all, all the time. So under um, 
severe wind shear conditions. Oops, sorry. Um, here is the land again, and basically, instead of kind of going up in elevation and the wind picking up just a little bit, it picks up a lot. So that's what I'm trying to show you here. Okay, so these two scenarios, if you have a, a cumulonimbus cloud developing in this, these two scenarios, your cumulonimbus cloud over here under normal conditions is going to, once it reaches its lifting condensation level, it's going to kind of go like that, okay? This is what we call a majestic um, kind of development. Over here, where you have a fair bit of wind shear, uh, fast moving air um, going as you go up vertically, then you are going to get a tilted cloud. And that is another thing. Can you see the tilt there? I don't know if you can. <laughs> okay. But it's that tilt that actually can make folks wonder, or meteorologists wonder, people who chase weather wonder if, if there's going to be that cell is going to produce severe weather, severe thunderstorm conditions. Um, so two things about that tilt. Uh, one thing, and we'll talk about this when we talk about tornadoes, is that it's not the tilt itself, but that wind shear actually can be the thing that initiates these uh, mesoscale, um, sorry, I'm drawing a blank, but these large circulation uh, blobs that end up spawning the tornadoes that we all, some of us like, or some of us are curious about, that sort of thing. But the other thing that the tilt can do, and I'm just going to go ahead and go on the next slide, the tilt can actually kind of help keep the updraft and the downdraft separated from each other. If you kind of study the kind of the difference between the mature stage of a thunderstorm cell like you see here and the dissipating stage, what can happen is to reach the dissipating stage, kind of the downdraft basically overtakes the updraft and it has no it longer has an updraft and so it kind of dies out. Tilted um, cumulonimbus clouds kind of keep the updraft separate from the downdraft, so it can kind of go on longer. So let's kind of take a look at this photo, or not photo, but this figure. You can kind of see it bumping up. Um, uh, this is the top of the tropopause. You can kind of see the anvil here. Um, you see, I guess this would be in the mature stage, wouldn't it? Because we have the updraft still there, so it's not dissipating. But we also have the downdraft here, the blue, um, so you know that it's the mature stage. Um, here we have our overshooting tops. Uh, storm movement is indicated um, from left to right. Let's see, what else do we have? There are some really cool things with this photo. There are some really cool things with um, developing thunderstorms. Um, one of the things, let's see if I can describe this. Yeah, if you can focus on the, um, the downdraft for a minute, okay? The cool thing is this is our lifting condensation level, LCL, kind of have a hopefully flat base. And then underneath part of the lifting condensation level where the cloud is, you're going to see the precipitation, the rain shaft. Um, and actually um, associated with that rain is what we call the, the downdraft. And that air, now not the, not the moisture, not the rain, but actually that air then can kind of move ahead. So here's the deal. If you, have you ever, um, I'm going to draw a little person there. Okay, a little person over there. And if you've ever um, had a storm coming and before you get the precipitation, you get a kind of a big old wind, that could be wind that's associated with the downdraft. And actually we call that a gust front. Isn't that cool? Um, let's see. But while I'm on, on to this, this idea of, of air coming from the cumulonimbus cloud, let me show you the air going into the cumulonimbus cloud. Um, do you see this, this air over here that is um, a part of the, the, um, the updraft? Okay, This is what we call inflow. So actually, if you were a person over here, okay, I drew another little person, you're going to have actually kind of a warm, moist air that is inflow kind of being sucked up into the cumulonimbus cloud. Isn't that cool? And if you're a little bit closer to where the precipitation is occurring, you're going to have a gust front, which is actually kind of cold, cold, moist air. Okay, so those are so cool. Um, and I do think it's really neat. 
Notice that um, the lifting condensation level, and actually it's not created by a lifting condensation level per se, it is in a sense, but also created by this gust front, we have what we call a shelf cloud. And I'm sorry, this, um, this figure got kind of uh, busied up, but there's a, like a little jutting out shelf cloud there, and we're going to talk just a minute more about that shelf cloud. So these are all features of a, um, a thunderstorm cell. Severe thunderstorm cell, probably. Look at the instability. We might go ahead and get our wind or our hail or our tornadoes. You know, you look at the overshooting tops. Um, so oh, you, if there's any sort of tilt to it, actually, that would help, too. So the roll cloud is associated with the shelf cloud, OK? So remember we said that, that we have this shelf cloud that kind of juts out in front and kind of drew in a shelf cloud. And then kind of associated with that shelf cloud is, um, and actually the when I think of shelf clouds, I think of um, what we call a, um, a multi-cell thunderstorm system called a squall line. That's what I think of anyway. It, but I think of multiple cells, thunderstorm cells, that are all kind of in a line together. And they're coming this way. And basically they create a shelf cloud in front of them. Um, so, to me then, that helps me think of this idea of a roll cloud. So, and I'm going to show you a picture right here. Actually, this is kind of looks like a hot dog, and again, it's kind of a long sort of thing. I don't know if you can see, but they're showing you kind of a roll cloud here. And can you kind of see the shelf cloud and kind of part of the roll cloud? And the roll is important because actually it's kind of just has a little bit of tumble from the inflow and the gust front. Okay, the, the updraft and the downdraft creating the gust front. So I don't know. It is so neat. I hope I hope that all works for you.